Good morning, GitLab. Good afternoon and good evening for all the folks who are in different time zones. Uh, this is the 12 1 retrospective. We are going to uh, quickly cover the first three sections and then leave as much time as we can for the fourth section where we talk about improvements. Uh, for those who are new to this process, you'll hear me talk very quickly uh, for, through the first parts and then uh, we will have discussion uh, for the last fourth section. Uh, previous retrospective improvement tasks, uh, just at a high level. Uh, those are uh, basically around two things from the last retrospective that we wanted to focus on. Uh, the first one was improving our access requests. Uh, essentially, we were stalled in getting uh, both dev and staging uh, for new developers in place. Uh, we talked with the IT ops team. They determined that uh, they were short on staff and as such uh, asked the security team basically to come back in and help with those access requests so that we can get them resolved more quickly. That issue is uh, effectively closed. The second one is uh, the D DB reviewers and maintainers. Uh, on that one, progress has been made in regards to the fact that we have some uh, now DB specific metrics around this. Uh, we'll have to look into whether we actually start tracking those at uh, the dashboard level, which I think would probably be a good idea from that aspect of it. Um, today, I assigned it to Craig Gomes, uh, essentially one of our uh, engineering managers here in the development team, uh, to look into uh, actually getting uh, some folks signed up so that we can have some additional DB uh, maintainers and reviewers uh, in place moving forward. That's the update on action items. Uh, moving to where things have gone well this month, uh, really seeing some really good collaboration across uh, several teams, uh, showing uh, the aspect that uh, we're expanding out, but we seem to be still uh, working effectively around uh, various teams, especially uh, cross-functionally as well, uh, which is recognized by our quality team. Uh, we've had good success with our Rails upgrade. Uh, really excited about that to see us uh, getting to the latest version of Rails. Uh, and obviously, uh, 6.0 will be out soon. So getting us on a regular cadence associated with that is super important as well. Uh, also on communication, uh, lots of blog posts from the UX department. Thank you for all those. And uh, um, uh, the Secures team is actually starting to do uh, development logs, which is kind of a neat feature. Uh, in regards to the fact of being able to get the most up-to-date status on what's going on on a given issue. In the area of forming, the memory team just formed in the last uh, month and a half, and it's good to see them making good progress. This was their first full milestone, so you see some good feedback about learnings uh, based on that. Um, and then also uh, setting high standards within that team itself. And then uh, last but not least, uh, we've had an influx of lots of new talent. Uh, it's exciting and uh, invigorating. Uh, we're seeing uh, the new members actually contribute uh, and a couple teams have kind of pointed that out how they've been able to get them up to speed and moving uh, to contribute. Uh, what went wrong this month? Uh, good call out around technical debt. Uh, basically, uh, we have a number of issues uh, around technical debt where um, it seems like we've got some crusty parts of the code that we need to go basically address. Um, trying to determine how best to address this uh, from an issue perspective. So if anybody has any suggestions around this, I think it's good to kind of go back here and kind of look at those aspects associated with it. Um, there is a theme that appears uh, with customer assistance. Uh, I think this one, and then also, I think it was later said, I believe in the planning, where uh, we're seeing a little bit of uh, changing in priority. Obviously, uh, customers are super important to us and we need to keep moving forward with uh, customers. Uh, so it's, it's a part of the job, but um, you know, uh, def definitely means that we're having to shift priorities uh, kind of at the last minute and uh, that was causing some frustration with it. Um, started a conversation with the TAM on that specific one, which is uh, exciting to basically work through that and see how we can best address that. Um, we've seen uh, some flaky issues with our uh, review apps uh, testing. Um, we are definitely working on fixing those. Um, similarly, uh, auto deploy had some similar issues uh, where uh, it broke uh, QA images and they had to scramble to fix those issues associated with it. And then uh, lots of observations around planning and uh, how we can potentially uh, make sure that uh, we are planning effectively and also building in some capacity for urgent requests as they come in uh, after we've planned uh, seems to be a, a, a theme that is kind of running through there from that aspect of it. And uh, last but not least in this section of how we improve uh, equipment delays, uh, basically two members of the memory team uh, obviously have mostly new members uh, had some challenges with uh, getting their laptops on time. I know that uh, the onboarding team is working on addressing this uh, 
Um, but uh, it appears that we still have a few folks that are uh, still still being delayed and uh, getting their laptops uh, by their start date. Uh, from there, and uh, I impressed myself, I only took five minutes to go what I thought was going to take 10, so I'm talking super fast. Uh, we've gone to the areas where we, how, how we can improve and we move into the area where we're actually hear from other folks in the organization. So, uh, Sean, if you're on the call, I'd love for you to talk about um, planning. Yeah, thanks, Christopher. So the issue we had here was just that um, uh, we tend to have things in progress. So this, this sort of feeds into a couple of things. It feeds into cycle time, but also we emphasize velocity over predictability. So like, you know, some issues um, might take longer because of that, because of like getting bumped down a priority list um, or because like, you know, um, they take a long time in review or whatever um, with the database reviews that we mentioned earlier. Um, but what this means is because the plan team at the moment is just one team and it's 10 people. Um, <laughs> there is like a huge amount of work that is in flight at any one time, which makes it quite hard to figure out like where we are um in terms of like once we get to a boundary of a milestone so um i had I, and this applies not just to me but also i think to donald so donald speak up if you want to uh, add anything here on the front end side um i think at the moment um first of all we're going to split the team in a couple of weeks when we get a new manager so that's going to help um with that part as well um the main thing we are thinking about is just like how we um how we categorize this and how we manage this like it's often not with issues where the scope is particularly big it's just often with the cycle time and with having a cutoff ideally for me personally like the more we can get towards a kanban style like you know list of work we pick things off the top the, the less these boundaries matter as well and the less we have to care about those and the more we can care about sort of overall cycle time without having to look at things at a, a snapshot necessarily um but yeah it was it was it was challenging trying to figure out like how much of this work that is in flight is going to how much work does this represent in the next milestone so how much does that impact the new work that we take on in the milestone essentially was the problem there um sorry i took quite a long time there because you went through the first part so quickly but um yeah that, that's basically it Cool. Do you think there's something we should track here? That was kind of the one question I had in my mind. Uh, Grant, the team split's going to change the dynamic as well uh, from that perspective. So, or is it just kind of an observation at this point and uh, check back in in a month? We, uh, so yeah, the other thing is that we haven't had a full-time product manager on plan and we do now um, and hopefully we'll have more than one soon as well, I think. So um, that's going to help a lot as well because, you know, that we can sort of distribute that work better and we can do, um, we can keep track of things better as they happen rather than sort of like, you know, suddenly find them uh, at the time. So from the comments, like, you know, I see Elliot also mentioned this um, for verify for context switching, but yeah, for, for plan, I'm mostly treating it as a thing that we are going to like work on actively improving like as a group at first. And then if other people have similar issues, like I've already talked to some people in the dev section about this, we can see if there's some commonalities, but um, I'm not at the stage yet where I've got any idea what what a specific solution would be for us right now. Cool. Thanks for uh, sharing that, uh, Sean. Uh, Felipe, uh, Felipe. To, oh, sorry. I was taking to, taking, was taking those comments. Donald's. Yeah, okay. I, was, I was just taking off. So I think I think you covered everybody. Uh, is there anything yeah. else on that topic? Uh, anybody wants to share, uh, Donald or uh, Elliot? Well, it's not present, yep. so that, that makes that easy. Um, cool, then we'll move on. Uh, development documentation, is uh, Oswaldo on the call? Sure. Uh, yeah, we, we noticed uh, a small problem while working on an uh, issue related to uploads. And we noticed that we didn't really test really well on object storage, and that's something that we, we support on GitLab. So uh, we quickly fixed that, and then afterwards it, we saw like an error, uh, an error of improvement that we could send a merge request to documentation so that we can document things to think about when making a change to GitLab. So it's very common to send a change and 
sometimes we just forget about some integration or uh, some related feature and sometimes uh, you actually don't know and the reviewer just forgets about it and the maintainer as well so that's kind of a problem and it, it would be interesting to have like a separate guide for developers to, to read through and understand a little bit better integrations that they might be affecting so we, we have a section on that today cool thank you that's uh, great to hear that we uh, made that adjustment um, uh, for that piece of it uh, James do you want to talk about the uh, customer portal app setup yeah so uh, basically we have um, some documentation on how to set up the customer portal and uh, the well, especially the newer engineers have been improving that with uh, with time, but uh, but it's still not great, especially for maybe not non techy people. And the wording, especially, needs updating. And then in the future as well, we may need to set up something similar to GDK or something like that that makes it easier to actually set up the uh, the whole app because there's quite a few steps basically involved in the in the process. So yeah, we have that issue to track. And then we have another one link there to uh, further make improvements and I have something like GDK. Excellent. Uh, Christy, you want to talk about uh, changes in planning and prioritization? Yeah, so just in general, um, I think that several of my teams experienced last minute priority shifts. I think that they were scheduled to work on that they thought they were going to be working on that they started working on kind of get shelved as the milestone started and they pivoted to other things which is 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 a struggle for them it, it leaves them feeling that they're just not doing their best work on those issues but i think that we're, we're smoothing that out in you'll see in the uh, improvements that ux and pm are, are talking a lot about how we can we can make this a smoother process for everyone thanks christy uh, Craig, uh, you want to talk, talk about documentation? Uh, planning? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, yes, uh, developing and documenting the planning. <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, so, I mean, the memory team's a bit of a, a unicorn, right? I mean, we're a newly formed team. We didn't have, we don't have a dedicated product manager at the moment. We didn't really have a roadmap to pick up. The release schedule changed while we were forming as a team. So we're, you know, there, there's a lot going on and we're trying to, I guess, codify our own process. And we have borrowed documentation from a bunch of other teams, distribution, create, plan. So appreciate all the existing documentation out there. And um, we are coming together as a team and just continuing to iterate and improve on our planning process. I mean, 12.2 was better than 12.1 and 12.3 will be even better. And I'm really keen to hear about how uh, some of the Kanban experiments are going on with other teams internally. So that's our goal. Thanks, Craig. And uh, Jean, do you have uh, uh, an item to uh, talk about in the planning area? Yeah, just uh, quickly similar to some other teams, we're um, in the configure stage, we're experimenting with um, using workflow-based uh, boards to have better visibility and prioritization of our issues. Um, we are actually also considering uh, um, adding in the planning fa uh, uh, phase to that board as well uh, to conform to the product development workflow. Um, we're busy discussing it. We've had about one or two team discussions about it and most people are on board with it. So we're likely going to uh, try it out for 12.2 and, and, and refine uh, as we go. Excellent. It looks like uh, Monitor is doing the same thing. So it's great to see uh, teams dogfooding the product uh, by using this because it's a great way to track work and uh, kind of understand the state of affairs. Uh, in a given a given area of the product. So really appreciate y'all spending time uh, looking at those types of improvements. Uh, excellent. Um, uh, Mac, you wanna talk to the end-to-end -end test gaps? Sure, thank you. So we have in, uh, this is in line with prioritization and visibility as well. Um, the history of GitLab, we used to have a lot of issues in every project in regards to end-to-end -to -end test gaps. Um, this has been hard for us to visualize the whole picture and then prioritize. So we have started to migrate everything over to one single repo and dock with our product as a test case management system as we go forward. And going forward, we will be picking from this and hammering this down into the next quarter planning uh, to lower the test gaps. And then it's visible for everyone 
what is left for us to do. Um, that's it for me. Thanks, Mick. Uh, I'll go ahead and read the next one. Uh, Darva is not present, but uh, it looks like Create is looking at uh, improving by uh, using a shared calendar or schedule around their sprint planning so they can better coordinate and associate with the teams. And uh, I'll follow up with Darva uh, afterwards uh, to see how we best uh, track that or, or if uh, that's fast enough that we don't even need to add a tracking associated with that. Um, and then uh, Adriel, uh, do you want to update us for uh, workflow? Yeah, so we've had a desire to kind of iterate on our UX artifacts. Um, the biggest uh, desire that came out of our retro was to see uh, more visibility into the UX design process as a whole. At first, we kind of discussed um, kind of promoting velocity through lo-fi designs, but through conversations with the UX team, it turns out that has really less of an impact on velocity and um, the fidelity of, of mockups doesn't really impact that as much as, you know, fidelity is more a tool to use when, you know, things are unclear or uncertain. So we discussed instead just posting mockups to issues more frequently throughout the design process so that we can have more feedback and collaboration throughout, even if the design is not yet uh, fully complete. We've also had some conversations around um, marking issues ready for development when we have about 70% confidence or so that we're uh, where we want to be design wise. Um, so we're iterating on that process and uh, there'll be, I'm sure, more to come as we as we uh, test it out. And just real quickly, I'll jump in to say everything that you're requesting is absolutely reasonable and what we expect on every single team. So awesome. Thank you. Let me know how it's going. Thank you. Yep. Love the team, cross team collaboration. So that's exciting to hear. Um, Thomas, you have the next one on communication and team breakout. Certainly, and happy Friday to everyone. Uh, so one of the things that came up during our retrospective is that as since we split the back end teams into two in the secure section, uh, we also went ahead and split everything, including our weekly team meetings. And what that has led to, unfortunately, is team members feeling like they had to not attend one weekly meeting each week, but two in order to be feel, to feel like they were informed as to what is going on and what is important within the section as a whole. The, what that is, that feedback has been heard. One of the things we started experimenting with this week uh, is a section-wide weekly call in order to do announcements that are of importance for everyone as opposed to just on one individual team. And then treating our weekly team calls as breakout sessions from that where we can get specific to what is uh, uh, to the subject areas of that individual teams themselves. Uh, this has been uh, the, the first chance, the first iteration of this has been good in that it's led to people feeling like they're having to spend less time in meetings. Um, and it's allowed us to really focus our conversation according to the uh, people that are most impacted by these uh, by the subjects at hand. Uh, so it's a it was a good first iteration on it. And it was uh, it was good feedback to, to get so that we can make the, we can spend less time in meetings and more time uh, working on the issues that were uh, in engineering itself. So Stay tuned. More updates on this as we as we refine the process. Thomas, I'm excited to hear what's working well and what's not working well. Well, uh, there. So we, we're going through the the same thing next month, basically, uh, in plan. Um, the intent that we had was to not split the meetings initially, but split them if we felt like so. Like start from the opposite end. Like start with just keeping the meeting across plan, and then. Uh, split when we feel like we sh we should split and see how that goes. Do you think that would have, you know, based on your experience, do you think that's reasonable, or do you think we should we should change and look to split at first and still have a stage wide one as well? I think a stage wide call is important because there undoubtedly there's going to need to be the same information given to all everybody within the same job family. Everybody's going to need the same information. However, there undoubtedly are you're going to. My opinion and what I'm seeing is that each team needs the autonomy in order to discuss things that are only important to the to what the group has having to deal with. Uh, so that gives us the ability to experiment with different processes in each individual team and then come back uh, and get more unified. It allows us to get specific in the subject areas that we're having to cover for us, like static analysis, we can get into that. And that's not as important as software in the software composition analysis team 
and they can get specific in their subject areas as well and have broader conversations about the issues they're trying to tackle. So honestly, I think the split is important, but as a breakout from the section-wide call. So that, that's, I think, that, I, think we've, I think we've found the right cadence with this. Cool, yeah, we'll um, check that out. Um, I'll speak to the new manager once they start as well. Just out of curiosity, um, real quick, uh, what's the expected attendance like on those calls for secure? Like, do you expect that most of the backend engineers can make a call for the, uh, each week? We have not changed the expectation uh, in that for those that can attend synchronously, great, you're welcome to do so. If not, please add to the agenda. It will be recorded, it will be uploaded to YouTube when we're publishing that when everything gets uploaded accordingly. Cool, sounds like we're on the same page there then. Thanks very much. Happy to. Thanks, uh, Sean. If uh, you find that uh, uh, using that strategy is effective, we should probably update our documentation around best practice and team splits. Uh, to reflect that, um, but we'll have to review the documentation there as well in the process. Um, cool, next uh, one I have on the list is uh, Luke. Uh, he worked on a number of issues that represent both front end and back end work. Um, these issues are really important in order to capture all the areas of discussion. It means I can't independently track the back end progress on the issue board. So he's uh, recognizing that there's uh, some challenges there associated with that aspect and I'll have to follow up uh, with the create team to see if there's any way we can uh, better track that associated uh, bit of feedback. Um, and then Elliot also is not present. Uh, he was talking about the fact that the current workflow for taking over community contribution is actually pretty cumbersome. Uh, he's suggested an issue basically to capture that uh, and to effectively improve it, um, which I've added to the retro to track associated with it because that seems a pretty common theme across all teams where we would want to keep that as, uh, as uncumbersome as possible. Uh, and Mac, you have tooling. Thank you, sir. So uh, we need to migrate um, the teams to the new labels ASAP because this will be blocking charge workflows and it will affect our uh, metrics flowing up to the dashboards. So the progress is going right now and everybody should be notified via email and we can review in Slack as well. Uh, going towards the next one, uh, we have identified a few key items regarding reducing the CI pipeline jobs and review apps. So we will be focusing on this as part of our Q3 OKRs as well. Um, and that, that's a recurring theme that I'm seeing. Thanks, Mac. Uh, so uh, key improvements for the next release or subsequent to the next release, I'll say. Um, these are the ones that I felt like uh, from reviewing the retrospective notes uh, kind of jumped out at me. Um, uh, the first one was around just uh, improving our installation of the customer portal. Um, the second one was adopting uh, a community contribution, making it less cumbersome. So that's the basically the community contribution. Uh, the title is adopt a merge request from a fork. Um, uh, from that perspective. Uh, and then um, uh, improving our review apps success rate um, and then uh, roll out of the new plan of uh, labeling so that we can uh, appropriately uh, keep our metrics uh, measured and, and responsive. And the last one is, is just a follow up from uh, last, last month to uh, basically revisit uh, whether we're increasing our DB maintainers and uh, sign Craig so that we can drive that effectively. And thank you, Craig, for taking that on. Are there any other issues that we should track at a high level from a retrospective? Are there any other questions? All right, we'll call it at 23 minutes and 50 seconds. Thanks everybody.